Welcome to another video. Let's see what infinity can do to a function when we try to take the limit. You know, sometimes infinity becomes a bit tricky. What you expect to happen is not what happens. Let's try and do some fake algebra, okay? If we can distribute this 1 over x to each of the terms inside, we know we cannot do that. But well, let's assume we can do that. We're going to get 1 over x distributed to this. That x is going to cancel this 1 over x, so you have 5. And you do the same thing to this, you're going to get 4. So you would expect that ultimately you're going to get 9 as your limit. That's one example. Another example is to say, you know what? 5 to the x plus 4 to the x as x goes to infinity, this is going to go to infinity, this also goes to infinity, and infinity plus infinity is going to be infinity, and infinity raised to power 1 over raised to power 0, oh, that's a problem. You're going to get infinity raised to power 0, and that's where you cannot, yeah, that's indeterminate. I know they say anything raised to power 0 is 1. This is one of those cases where you can't use it because then you're going to say your answer is 1. So now we have two options. The limit is either 9 or 1. But in fact, it is neither of those two. The answer to this limit is 5. Let's get into the video. Based on what I explained before, I am just going to do what I would do in case I get a question like this. The first thing I would like to do is to make sure I have a constant inside along with a term that is changing. It is dangerous to have two of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out 5 to the x or 4 to the x, whichever I want. But in this case, I'll take the bigger one out because I want to create, because I'm dealing with infinity, I want to create fractions, proper fractions. And it is better to have 4 over 5 than to have 5 over 4 because 4 over 5 is a proper fraction and that's what I'm thinking. So I'm going to factor out 5 to the x. So I'm going to say, um, consider. So now I'm ignoring the limit because I just want to do the algebra first. So here, I'm going to say that um, is equal to, if I divide both sides by 5 to the x, is the same thing as taking out 5 to the x. You see that? So if I divide this by 5 to the x, I'm going to get 1. If I divide this by 5 to the x, I'm going to get 4 to the x divided by 5 to the x, right? Raised to power 1 over x. Now, this is the same thing as 5 to the x. Oh, by the way, sorry, everything is raised to power 1 over x, as you can see. Because what I just did was I rewrote the inside. So I can just, because this is a multiplication, I can distribute these powers. So this is 5 to the x raised to 1 over x times 1 plus. This is now written as 4 over 5 to the x raised to power 1 over x. Can you see that? So now, this x takes out this x, so what I have is just 5. And what I have here is not simpler. I cannot distribute, just like I did not distribute here when I had a plus, I cannot distribute 1 over x now that I have a plus, so I have to leave this guy the way it is. So it's going to be 5 times 1 plus 4 over 5 raised to the x raised to the 1 over x. So this is no longer trouble for me because remember, if I rewrite this now as the limit, so the limit I'm looking for, so now I can say this is what I have. This is the limit as x goes to infinity of 5 times 1 plus 4 over 5 
raised to power x raised to 1 over x. So I can rewrite this as this because I've simplified it here. So I can say, ta ta da da ta. Let, I want to replace this with y, all of this, because it looks a bit messy and there's no way I can deal with it right now. So I'm going to say, let y be equal to 1 plus 4 over 5 to the x, 1 over x. I already know I'm going to get a good answer because I have a proper fraction here. It will go to 0 as x goes to infinity. Yeah, you can already see the answer, but you can't just write the answer. You can't just say what I said. If I gave you a test and you told me that, oh, I know this is going to go to zero, so that zero plus one is one, and one raised to the power anything is one, and one times five is five, and then you tell, because that's really what's going to happen, you get five out of ten. Because the reason I gave you is not because I don't know the answer is five. I want you to show me how you mathematically justify it. Okay, you have to get justified. So here we go. I'm going to write this so I can say this is now equal to this is equal to 5 times the limit as x goes to infinity of y. This now looks nice, but what exactly is y? We're going to go here. Remember we said y equals this, so I'm going to take the natural log of both sides right now. Natural log of y will be equal to the natural log of what I have here. 1 plus 4 over 5 to the x raised to 1 over x. So I know that the natural log of y is equal to this 1 over x comes all the way down here. Then I have ln. That's what I have. And that's it. That's my natural log of y. So now I can take the limit of both sides. So if I take the limit, the limit, now I'm not going to write as x goes to infinity anymore. Just know that that's where it's going. I'm going to drop that just to make my work to write less, okay? The limit of the natural log of y is equal to the limit raised to power x. Whenever you take the limit of a product, you can apply the product rule for limit, which states that the limit of a product is the product of the limit as long as each of the limits exists individually. And I know that this limit exists. The limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x is 0. I know this limit exists because I can do this. So I can say that this is equal to the limit of 1 over x multiplied by the limit of the natural log of 1 plus 4 over 5 raised to power x. Right there. So the question you want to ask yourself is, I know this is 0, what will this limit be? Um, well, we know we can actually move this limit inside. So the limit of a function is the function of the limit, as long as the function is continuous. And that's what you're going to do here. You need to move this limit inside the function. So it becomes the limit, the natural log of the limit. So what we're going to have here is we're going to say um, the limit of ln y. In fact, I will do the same thing here. I'm going to move this limit inside, so I'm going to write the natural log of the limit of y. So, I'm going to say the natural log of the limit of y as x goes to infinity will be equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x times the natural log of the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 plus 4 over 5 to the x. 1 plus 4 over 5 to the x. I hope the camera can catch this 
corner that I have here. What do we have here? This is equal to zero plus zero times the natural log. What is this limit? As x goes to infinity, this proper fraction will go to, to zero. What is one plus zero? It's one. So it's just going to be natural log of one, which we know is equal to zero. So it's zero times zero, which is equal to zero. So I can come back here and say that the natural log of the limit of y as x goes to infinity is equal to zero. I just need to raise both to e, right? So I know that the limit of y as x goes to infinity is equal to one, which is e to the zero. Let me write it. So it means this part of my work, this part here, let me box it, is equal to one. And now we just write the answer. I can say, therefore, where's the question? The limit, the limit as x goes to of, 5 to the x plus 4 to the x raised to 1 over x is equal to 5 times 1, which is equal to 5. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.